Hello, welcome to Integrated Wellbeing Institute's YouTube and podcast channel. And this, it is for people in grief and the professionals who serve them. We provide education, inspiration, and practical tools by interviewing those bereaved by loss, mental health professionals, and grief specialists. Integrated Wellbeing Institute seeks to awaken the griever to their inner peace through the guidance of their body. And today, I would like to welcome Serena Huron to our program. Oh, thank you, Georgina. So happy it's, to be so, here. it's so nice to have you today. And I wanted to share with you how I met, how Serena and I met. So we showed up in a virtual networking gathering. And then Serena, you jump in to, you know, either correct or deepen my, <laughs> my experience. And we were in a breakout room. I mean, there were hundreds of people on this call, wouldn't you say, Serena? Sure. And so mm -hmm. in our breakout room, there were probably eight of us and we had a moderator and we had five minutes, two minutes to do this, one minute to do this, two minutes to do this, and then two minutes to get feedback. So it just went along and Serena went first. And I noticed her presence, her poise, and her heart. And I was just magnetized by that. And so I went second. And I think I even said, Serena, I want to know you better. <laughs> In, and so here we are today. We've had a Zoom conversation, just getting to know you, the two of us. And as we were talking, the work that she does is with emotions. And I said, what a gift that would be for the podcast audience, people grieving and the professionals who serve them. Because it's really interesting. It wasn't until 2020, Serena, that I began noticing books that were published about emotions. They've been off limits for such a long time. So I am so grateful that you're here today and her bio will be published right underneath this um, interview today. So you may read the details in full, but is there anything that you'd like the audience to know about you before we dive into our questions and conversation? Um, you know, I, that I've been doing this kind of work for over 25 years. And so I'm going to be speaking from my experiences and from things that I've discovered that help people to work with their emotions. Um, I, I'm a spiritual teacher and a healer, and that is the, the, the lens through which I will be looking. I'm also trained as a scientist. I was a chemist and uh, did medical research and have a, 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 a re abiding interest in emotions from a, a biochemical point of view as well, <laughs> even though that doesn't really play a part in my work now. Mm -hmm. However, as human beings, uh, we're gifted with emotions. And so mm -hmm. emotions can be overwhelming. One of the three facets of grief that I always share with new clients, Serena, is part of grief is navigating the ocean of emotion. And so it was interesting because Serena and I had a lovely conversation um, because there's information out there by an esteemed, re, uh, wouldn't you say, researcher about emotions. And the information that came out was healthy emotions last 90 seconds. Well, thankfully for all of us, Serena is a researcher and she dove into that. And she's going to share some of that with you now because Heavens, if we're in grief and this sadness goes on and on and on, 90 seconds, what's wrong with me? Oh, there's nothing wrong with you. You're yeah. grieving. Tell us more, Serena. Yeah, well, it was Jill Bolte Taylor, and she is a neuroanatomist, so she's not a chemist or a biochemist. Yes. But, you know, she, uh, she really created this 90-second rule out of her own experience. So we, we're not going to, you know, say anything other than that was her experience. But if you look more deeply into it, there are certain 
neurotransmitters that only last 90 seconds, but there are things like adrenaline and um, the things that you would be familiar with, uh, adrenaline or uh, serotonin or GABA or those kinds of things. But in fact, when you have an emotion, as Candace Pert talked about in Molecules of Emotion, which is a wonderful book, a bit old now, but a wonderful book, and that there are neuropeptides that are also created and those have a lot longer half-life. So we, if we took this idea that all emotions or healthy emotions only last 90 seconds, it would really be a detriment to anyone that's grieving because that is just not the truth of those. It's normally something that causes fear or st stress or aggression or anger, like in the moment, like, you know, a tiger coming near you <laughs> that generates those like adrenaline and that adrenaline goes away very quickly in 90 seconds but your maybe your emotions your body is still physiologically responding and for other emotions that create neural peptides it would certainly be longer than 90 seconds so there's nothing wrong with you if you're not processing something over in 90 seconds <laughs> that's right there's nothing wrong with you you're grieving no. right exactly so and i would like to have you now share with our audience, Serena, what you have learned about emotions over your decades in serving others. Well, I think that I would begin with saying that we've learned a lot of things about emotions that are not supportive of us. <laughs> and one thing is that your emotions really are your friends because they're giving you guidance. So, you know, when you get when you have anger, let's say, over a situation, it's, it's actually saying to you, you need to look here and see what needs to change or what needs to be different. And so we, if we start to think about our emotions as tools for navigating our lives, that's a lot different than making them our enemy, which has been a sort of a, a traditional part of what, how emotions were taught. We also weren't taught very much about how to process emotions. And, you know, and in the manifesting community, this whole idea of let's just take this emotion and we're going to we're going to just jump up. We're, we're depressed. So we're going to just jump up to the next emotion isn't realistic and isn't healthy. Even if you can do it, you still have not dealt with the underlying emotion. And emotions are feelings in motion and their energies in motion. I, I can pause there. I can keep going. <laughs> Um, no, that's absolutely wonderful. So I really do want our audience to hear once again. In my words, your emotions have messages. Right. And it's important when an emotion comes up, especially one that may take you by surprise because it feels like it came out of nowhere, to pause, to feel it, and to know and ask them, hey, what are you trying to tell me? Right. That's certainly uh, one part of it. And there's a little process that you can use for that. So I'll share that here. Good. And that is that as an emotion arises, you can look and, and try to tell where it is in your body. Yes. You know where it is in your body and then ask that, um, that part of your body what that emotion is. So anger has all kinds of you know, I'm ticked off to I'm enraged <laughs> and try to find out what level you're really at with that and have a dialogue with that. And you can do that just by conversation. You can sit down and write and ask that that particular word, whatever it is, what do you want to tell me and actually write it out so that you're as you're doing that, you're actually processing the emotion. And so that's one thing to look at. Mm hmm. Thank you so much for saying that. And as you just heard, it's a process and you do the work. It's not something that happens out there. The way through is in. Yeah. The way through is through it. <laughs> as the other way we could look at it too. Yes. And there's another way that I often teach about processing emotions. And that is to sit down and write what the emotion use your five senses, what it feels like, smells like, tastes, um, what you're here with that emotion, what it feels like. Did I get all five? Whatever. But you know the five. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that 
as you're doing that process, it's actually transforming that emotion. And you may get to the end of it and find that that emotion has now been released. That's really neat. I've not heard that one. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because I wonder what the taste of anger would be. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the bitterness. Yeah, I would. Okay. That would be my guess, but we sure. would have to see, you know, there might be somebody that it's, it's sweet because they like anger. You know? Exactly. Exactly. And so that's, a, the, it's an opportunity for you to be in the moment and present to what's happening to you, because right. we know that awareness, which is what this brings is the first key to change and change happens only in the present moment. So. Yeah. Exactly. That brings you in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of being in the present moment, let's one of the first things that can happen when you have a difficult emotion is you go out of your body. And so it's very important to bring yourself back into your body. And you can do that just by imagining your energy coming down and sinking into your feet. And one, this is a protective mechanism. So, so maybe you can't only get it all part way in or, or, or all the way in, but to, to be practicing, bringing yourself back into the present by bringing your energy down into your body. Because that so is an escape route. Yes. So some people, Serena, may say, what do you mean my, I go out of my body? <laughs> <laughs> Let's yeah. start with that. Sure. Okay. Well, we, you know, we're energetic beings. and We are uh, indeed. And, and our energy resides in our body, but it can also rise up and go outside of our body. And let me tell you, this is called being ungrounded, but it is also a protection mechanism people often use when they have strong emotions. And when you're ungrounded, when you're not in your body, you feel confused, you feel not right, things don't seem right. It's just, it's very, it's not a good place to be. It's just not helpful to you in any way. So even from a perspective of you know, regardless of whether you had any emotion arising, practicing being in your body and probably what's best is practicing being in your body every day so that when the emotion arises, you know how to do it. Exactly. Because then what you do is you recognize something's off what just happened. Oh, I just left my body. Yeah. And then yeah. that is that awareness is the first key to change. And then you can give yourself the permission to fully feel back in your body. And I think I want to mention one other thing here too, which is that I love circular breathing. And so if you have an emotion that seems overwhelming to you, just begin to breathe, breathe in and breathe out without stopping at whatever pace you're at. Not, and you know, the, if you're very fearful, by the way, your energy is, your breathing is going to be up here in your chest. So you can also think about dropping your breathing down here again, this is something you can practice before you have a moment when you're needing this, this tool. Yes. But mm -hmm. aside from that, also this circular breathing, if you're, if you've got a strong emotion in this circular breathing, just breathing in and out without stopping, will move that energy. And you can do that for 10, 15 minutes. And there are even, there's even a man who says, that if you do this every day for 15 minutes, you will be enlightened. <laughs> so, oh, interesting. Who is that man? Um, he wrote the book called Presence. His name is Michael something. <laughs> okay, good. Well, we'll I'll find that and we'll put that along mm -hmm. with your bio and everything yeah, else yeah, yeah. down below. I think that's really, really neat because um, what I love to teach people is the breathing as if you're imagining a waterfall that comes mm -hmm. down the front of you and then goes up the back and showers you and then allows those emotions mm -hmm. to, to move. So I really appreciate you bringing this up, Serena, because we haven't talked about the breath with very many of our uh, yeah. guests here. And, and it's oh so important and it's very often overlooked. And as I've been listening to podcasts with people who um, are grief experts, they so often talk about their clients holding their breath. So mm -hmm. what you've already done is said, oh, when you notice yourself with your breath up here, pause and begin to breathe in that circle, imagining your breath just getting lower and lower 
is what I heard. Did I get it? Yes, you got it. That's perfect. You know, these are, these are, and there's always, you know, where you work with these little tools and you make them your own. So what works for you, what feels good to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I want to say about energies, I, I work with energy. So I want to speak about the fact that if you don't process your energy, your emotions, they get stuck in your, in your energetic field and they create little blocks and they can build and they can get start out like a little seed and you keep n- not dealing with that emotion and it can get bigger and those have to be released at some point and if you're thinking about manifesting those little nuggets are part of your vibration that is manifesting so it's all connected you see mm-hmm. and so it, you know another reason to really in the moment process your emotions as much as you can and for those things that come up as you're living your life, again, to try and process them in the moment. And even sometimes maybe sitting down and intentionally re- revisiting some experience when you're yes. in, uh, when you're feeling comfortable and safe, when you've already grounded yourself and maybe mm-hmm. journal on it and really get connected with it and allow the emotions to move. So you're the first person that's talked about our energetic body. So mm-hmm. would you share the basics of that that you feel our audience would like to know, please, Serena? Sure, I'd love to. Um, of course, it comes out of, I I, I first uh, got connected with it through Barbara Brennan, who is a, was yes. a, a very famous healer. I can tell, I have a fun story about my connection with Barbara Brennan, but anyway. Okay, uh, let's hear it. it. Tell well, us about I, your connection. Well, I, you know, I, discovered I was a healer in a dream. I mean, I've always, I'm a natural healer, but I discovered it in a dream and I was guided to go to three like weekends of training. I was on my way to go live in Europe. This is also totally guided to go live in Europe in which country I did not know. And I did not know anyone there, but anyway. (laughs) And so I went to Barbara Brennan's weekend and Barbara was speaking on Friday night and I'd had an experience and I raised my hand and I asked her a question and she answered my question. And she said to me, you're a natural healer. It is your life's purpose to which I went, Oh my God, I went to my room and cried. And uh, there's more, a little more to the story. I went to my room and cried and I thought, Oh my God, everybody heard that. And I realized nobody knew who I was. was And I would just went back and went through the rest of the weekend in which I did my first healing and had so many interesting experiences. But another part of that was that a psychic had said to me, you need to shake hands with Barbara Brennan. I said, I'm going to shake hands with Barbara Brennan. It's a big, huge thing. I'm on the elevator going to my room with her book in my hand. The elevator door opens and she walks. She puts out her hand and says, hi, I'm Barbara Brennan, and shakes my hand. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. And I have my first healing practice in Austria. That's, that's a whole other story. And Barbara Brennan used to come to me in dreams and we would sit around a table talking like an oval table with other healers. <laughs> I don't know exactly what we were doing. So she's played a, a interesting role in my life, but that's where I first um, explored the energy field more deeply. And it comes out of the chakra system, the Hindu chakra system that we have uh, seven chakras in our body. Energy and that, centers in the body. <laughs> energy centers, they're four, they're vortexes and they spin right. and each one of them has a function and they're connected to your neuro, they're connected to your endocrine system, they're connected to the rest of your body. So they're they're a vital part of your 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 body and your health, really. And um so each um one of these chakras has a layer around your energy field. So you have seven layers of energy, and on the fifth layer, which I'm touching right now is a blueprint for your body. And Mm. when that blueprint is healthy, then your body is healthy. And when it's not, your body is not healthy. So that's the basis for energy healing is to bring, is to catch those energetic um, anomalies or things that are not right in your field and remove them. Yes. Um, And I work with you. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, no. No, go ahead. No, that's fine. Well, I I was seeing as you were talking about the the um, knots for me is what they were like knots of energy that right. were then growing, right? Mm-hmm. And right. so just to yes. have those cleared out of the field. Yes, 
Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I'll just add here in my experience of working, doing healing work, as I was healing one day, I suddenly had the recognition that all illnesses have an emotional basis to them. And then this is another reason why it's so important to keep processing your emotions because you don't want yes. to create those deviations in your field. Mm -hmm. And so this is your spiritual DNA, your spiritual, this is your physical, well, I say spiritual, your, it's kind of like there's a blueprint. Your, your, we can call that your DNA of your body. It's your blueprint of your body. There's also a blueprint of your soul. And I work with the blueprint of the soul as well. And that's your spiritual DNA or your, your, um, uh, quantum DNA, if you like. Yeah. Your quantum blueprint. Yeah. Well, thank you. So I hope you all heard that it's that fifth level where that DNA is, that blueprint of your body. Mm -hmm. And also what I really appreciate what you just said, Serena, is in your experience, and you're not the only one, Louise Hay was another person that also mm -hmm. said, you know, emotions are the seed of dis-ease. Yeah, I just, it was just a recognition uh, one time when I was doing a healing session that that was really mm -hmm. the truth of the matter. So that's why they're incredibly important. They're incredi incredibly important in terms of guiding us and showing us where we need to heal and show giving us direction. And they're so important in, in allowing them to flow. That's what they want to do. They want to flow. So any way you can help them flow. So, you know, when I tell people that are feeling depressed, I often say, you know, if you can just get up and dance, and I know that can be hard when you're depressed, but if you can get yourself up and get yourself dancing, you are starting to move your energy and that's going to help you to move your emotions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it is hard to get up when you feel so pulled in right. and so depressed, so depleted, so shattered by grief. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm, you know, I'm not an expert on grief, but I do feel that it's related to trauma and that it, any processes that you can discover for helping you with trauma, like working with your nervous system, regulating your nervous system will also help you to process grief. And it's the same idea, you know, grief is like comes on you suddenly you, you see something and it clicks a memory and all of a sudden the grief is there it's the same as with a trauma somebody speaks very loudly to you and you were yelled at as a child and boom you're into some emotions so it's yes. similar in energetics in my in the way i see it it's sim similar in energetics so wow you've got this opportunity to look at how to regulate your nor your nervous system as another tool to use to help you resolve grief. Thank you. Yes. And so I'm curious, what would you like our audience to know about specific emotions that come up as you work with people? I'm curious if there's two or three that regularly come up, Serena. I, I don't know for you. Yeah. Um, you know, I, what I mostly teach about, you know, I, I think there's a, a wide variety of emotions that come up oh. among people. Maybe maybe people in grief have certain ones more than others, but, you know, there's all, all of this. There's even things like shame, and uh, I think shame is a big thing that comes up, or people who don't feel worthy. This, these, yes. are, these, the, these are things that are left over from childhood, and these are things that need to be resolved and... Um, and so I teach people how to work with their emotions and to be, be use emotional intelligence when they're working with their emotions so that they can process them and they can have a life of peace and simplicity. They don't have to be being dragged this way by an emotion or that way by an emotion because they know how to, to respond to them when they arise. Mm -hmm. And you gave us a beautiful, two beautiful tools to do that earlier in the program. So when the emotion comes up and it's a surprise, stop and ask that emotion what it is here to tell you, what its message is. And then the other tool that I just love that you shared is what would this emotion sound like, look like, taste like, smell like, 
feel like. Right. So it's those five senses. And do you have a story that you would like to share about someone when you were working with their emotions? It was so memorable. It's in your body. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting because I don't, um, I don't do hands-on healing anymore. Right. I, I, okay. I, I, I completed, uh, you know, I, I, I worked in hospitals. I did all kinds of things. And, um, so, you know, a memorable thing that came up, I, it's not really, it's in some ways not related to emotions, but it was, um, when I was working with a cancer patient and I got to their solar plexus, I actually saw the whole universe in there. Oh my word. Yes. And so that was like, wow, that, you know, that's, there's that saying like the universe is within us. I saw it, it is. in him. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it was wow. like an incredible experience for me and for him as I shared it with him. And, um, I'm, I, so it's been many years since I've done hands on healing and I'm more now working with the Akashic records and with the soul blueprint. And that has a lot of, um, effortless change that help, helps you to bypass a lot of mental, emotional healing. So I tend to work with that more than I do the, um, the hands on healing. So, and, and I teach people how to process their emotions, but I think a lot of it is, is worthiness or feelings of not enoughness that um, are, are the feelings that, that a lot of people have to deal with. Mm -hmm. I In our culture, so there's so much shame and yeah. guilt and that unworthiness. Yeah. And so guilt, I love to talk about guilt because guilt is a completely waste. It's not really an emotion. It's a judgment that you've made against yourself and it's a complete waste of time. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't change anything. It just makes you feel bad. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, like a, I'm, a opponent, I'm a opponent of guilt. <laughs> keeps, it, keeps you in the loop, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, if you decide you want to be, and I can understand that um, someone who has lost someone might have some feelings of guilt, but just to be, and we'll talk about this, about being very compassionate with yourself and loving yourself and re recognizing that guilt is just an ego trip. It's an ego trick. It's not a real thing. And that your love, just the love that you have, and if even if someone departed and things were not on the best of terms, that you can always have that conversation with the spirit of that person. And just, and even if you don't feel like they answered you, just sit and Talk to them, tell them how you feel, tell them how you, what you wish you had done and tell them, just let it all out and let it process and then forgive yourself, which is something people forget to do. Forgive yourself and move on. And, and let me, I'll give you the Hawaiian. Whole oh, that'd be lovely. We, no one has shared that one with us yet. Yeah. And it, it's just four simple phrases. It's, uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I'm not sure which way it goes. I'm sorry. Um, I love you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I love you. Thank you. Um, and please, please forgive me. And please forgive me. It doesn't really matter what the sequence is. The idea no. is forgiveness is let's talk about forgiveness too a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah, because it's never for <laughs> them. It's for no. us. So let's yeah. do talk about that, Serena. Yeah, Forgiveness is never, it's never saying that somebody else, whatever somebody did was okay. No, you can still say what they did was not okay, but it's as long as you don't forgive them, you are energetically spending, you're spending your energy towards them and you're connected to them energetically so that when you forgive, it's really about freeing yourself mm -hmm. and allowing yourself to, to move on from a situation. There's nothing so toxic as being unforgiving of someone else because it's it's polluting you. It is not polluting the other person. It's not doing anything to them. It's just polluting you. <laughs> so, um, and I like but, that word, and I have not heard that word, Serena. It's polluting you. Right. And that's even stronger than to the toxin kind of thing. Right. Because it's... For me, it brings an immediate picture. <laughs> okay. So thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. It's just yes. the words that came to me. Mm -hmm. Now, now, one of the things that you said 
nobody else has said on this uh, podcast YouTube interview sequence yet are you use the term Akashic Records. Would you please share with our audience the meaning of that? Tell yes, us I, yes, I, I, I know that that word doesn't have any meaning for most people. So it's really, it's really the records of your soul. It's your soul blueprint. And it's held on an energetic level, which is beyond these dimensions here. It's not on the third and fourth dimension with the mental, emotional. It's beyond the body because it's the soul. <clears throat> As your soul has traveled, it has, it, first of all, your soul, your original soul has gifts in it and powers that you're here to express. And it, it, it has other qualities that you're here to express. And as the soul has traveled, because um, I believe souls are immortal, so I believe they travel and they have different kinds of experiences as they travel. Sometimes they make decisions that are not in alignment with who they, they are at soul level and it creates interferences and in they're being able to express their soul, which is what we're here for, right? We have this body Our for this purpose. body to be expressed. And mm -hmm. so um, I work with people by... I work mostly with business people, but whatever, what I do is applicable to anybody. And that is that I look at your soul blueprint in the Akashic records, and I tell you what your soul gifts are and how you can use them. And I look and see what's interfering and remove them. And I look and see what your seven keys are to manifesting, which everybody does a little differently. And so it's looking at your blueprint that you came here with, which is what you want to express, you know, at the highest yes. level. And um, so that's the work with the Akashic Records. Does that make, is that clear or do I need, it, you like yes, it, it, it's lovely because one of the things that you said is that we each begin with that pure energy as soul and come in. And then there are things that we're here to do in this lifetime. So, yeah, yes. Absolutely. And, and, <laughs> the, and, you know, we've been talking about emotions that get stuck in our energetic body. And so much of this happens in my experience, not because we don't care, not because we're trying to be mean, we just don't know. That's why I keep going back to the awareness. And that's why I was so excited that we could have a conversation with our audience, Serena, is because you bring such a new level of awareness to our audience. You know, I'd like to say one another thing about Akashic Records and about soul journeys, because yes. I think it could be comforting to some people. And that is that um, when people exit, it's part of it's you. It's part of their blueprint. It's and the way that they exit is also part of their blueprint. And all of you, on you know, your family and the people all agreed to have this experience together, so that all of these experiences are actually opportunities for you to to evolve and grow grow more. I hope that comforts some people to understand that there were no mistakes made that and that there was nothing that you might be able to do to make it be different, that this is how it was planned out in the blueprint. That's right. And, and that's a, a, a level of belief that is new to some people. So yeah. thank you very much for sharing it here. Yeah. I was with a group of people this weekend at a grief retreat, and the question came up, why do some people die so young? And I did not offer that as a way of looking through the glass and mm -hmm. simply said, each person's journey is their own. Yeah. So, yeah. That's and, the truth. And, and when it, if they've exited at their exit point they've been they're, they're complete and yes. they, they've completed and you know and that's and it's just, not for us to say we don't want them to go well i mean we you know there is a sadness of not having their physical presence but their spiritual presence is always there and can't be connected with and you can ask them to actually show me some symbols show me some let me know you're there mm -hmm. and then and a lot of the spirits will do that they will come down and to send a bird by you or something that has meaning for the two of you. Exactly. And it was so neat. I was working with a corporate client this morning mm -hmm. and this person's uh, have an anniversary of a parent's departure is coming mm -hmm. up for them. And they were very close. 
And this person felt absolutely overwhelmed and just went to their knees and said, come and help me. And I loved that. Uh, Michael, Dr. The Reverend Dr. Michael Beckwith uses help. And I shared that then with this client. Hello, mm -hmm. eternal loving presence. And immediately upon asking for help, this person felt the comfort of that parent. Now it didn't last long, didn't last long enough, but there was the awareness then that I'm really not alone. Mm. And so what this person left with as part of the session today is, oh, I can allow myself to ask and I can appreciate and accept what comes through. Yeah, it's beautiful. It was just, it was just a lovely, lovely experience. Beautiful. So I can't thank you enough for mentioning that. Yeah. And then the other thing I just want to go back for a little bit. And we talked about, you know, overwhelm. If you have overwhelming emotions, if you really felt, go to the circular breathing. Don't, okay. Don't try Good. to talk to it or any, just go to circular breathing and, until that emotion moves. And then, then go in and look at it. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. So what you do first is you dissipate the energy of it. Right. So then you can relate to it. Yeah. So you're calm and you can come back into your body. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and come from, come from that place of being in your body as a human being. Yeah. Exactly. So that's really important. Well, I wanted to tell you all that Serena has been very, very generous. And there's going to be a link below where you can sign up to have more of Serena. So why don't you just tell our audience a little bit more about that? Well, what I'd like to, to offer your audience is that I send out weekly a message from the guides of the Akashic Records or the Akashic Record Keepers. And it's normally... Um, a little bit of an introspective and a inspiring little bit of information. It's very short. And I'd love for everyone to be able to um, experience that if you'd like. And you can do that at serenacurrent.com forward slash uh, message. And I, okay. I, didn't, I just noticed that my last name isn't on here. Uh oh, I'll put it on so people know how to spell it. It's there we go. Okay, so great. it's serenacurrent.com and forward slash message. And then that will get you a weekly message in, from the Akashic Records. Great. And it, it's just a lot. It's just another way for you to connect and, mm -hmm. and have some peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're all about, especially because right now we're having this dialogue as we move further into the holiday season. The Day of the Dead, All Saints, All Souls Day has happened. We're moving toward Thanksgiving, and this will be um, uh, published right after that. And then we're into the, the Christmas and Hanukkah season and Kwanzaa. And so it's an opportunity then for you to have that support through this time that may be very, very, very difficult for you. Mm -hmm. So that's that's marvelous. So Serena, what else would you like our audience to know as our before you go today? I think I would mention one more thing, which is okay. you know we make up stories about what has happened and what took place, and they're only stories. Um, if you ever seen the movie Rashomon, it's about a murder that takes place, and three people see it, and the stories do not are not the same at all. So. Whatever story you've made out about your experience, make up a new one, make up four or five, and then pick the one that's the most empowering for you and live with that story. Don't hold on to the stories that are bringing you down. Mm. That's the, That would be the last uh, thing I would say today. How lovely. So what I heard you say is you gave everyone permission to write a story, their story, four or five stories, and pick the one that supports you. Yes, absolutely, because none of them are true. They're only they're only our perspective. None of them are true. So pick the one that feels good and support. Oh, 
That's so lovely. It truly mm -hmm. is. Well, I want to thank you so much for your yes, not <laughs> only to me, but to the audience, for everyone that says yes to Serena Kern dot com forward slash message and is it message or messages message message it's message it's singular i yeah mm -hmm. singular. and uh and and we'll have that link below so that you can continue to learn from and be supported by serena so oh, thanks you. to each of you who came today and got this expanded perspective of who you are and the way things work. <laughs> so thank you very, very much for being here today, Serena. It was my total pleasure. And, and um, thank you for the opportunity to bring some salve to some people who may be suffering.